Heavenly Father, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be lifted high. There's no one that compares to you, our God. There's no one that compares to you, our King. There's no one that compares to you, our Messiah. There's no one that compares to you, our Rock, the Rock of Ages, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Most High God. We give you all the glory this morning. We thank you, Lord, for making it possible, oh God, for us to be here this morning. We thank you for the entrance of your word that gives unto us a light. We thank you for being life, for being the way, the truth, and the life, for being our rock, for being our king. Father God, as we bring the word this morning, we pray for clarity. We pray for deep understanding of your word. Blessed are you, our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's awesome presence. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was absolutely awesome. Praise the name of the Lord. The God we're serving, he's a faithful God. The God we're serving, he's a good, good father. Hallelujah. The God we're serving is a good, good God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're welcome to God's presence. You're welcome to today's glorious service. It goes to be an awesome service. It's going to be a wonderful service. Hallelujah. It's going to be a wonderful service. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. God is faithful. God is awesome. So today we're going to be looking at the topic, Wonders of His Name. Wonders of His Name. And today's um, Bible passage is going to be Philippians 2, 8 to 11. Philippians 2, 8 to 11. And it reads, being fashioned as a, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name of, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things underneath the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I pray that God will bless his word in our ears this morning, Amen. and I pray that God will give us clarity for these words in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I pray that every word that God has ordained for you and I, that we will be in a place to receive it, will be able to assimilate his word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to read verse 9 and 10 of that same scripture in the Passion Translation. And it says, because of that, because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names, the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to the name, to, he, to, the, to this name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. So the three realms, the heavenly realm, the earthly realm, and the demonic realm. Everyone, everything in that realm will submit to the name of Jesus. We're told that the name of Jesus is the greatest of all names. And this name was given by God. It wasn't a name given by man. It was a name that God gave. Um, it's a name that has all authority. So you're looking for authority. You're looking for the one who is really in charge. You know, it's that name, Jesus. It's the name that causes every knee to bow. You know, it is not that they're asking their knees to bow. It's not that they're saying to the knee, bow. No, the knee must bow in reverence. Um, death could not stop, you know, this name. You know, the Bible said, even after death, that was when he was given a name, you know, higher above every other name. So, you know, some people, they only have, their name only has authority whilst they live. But the name of Jesus has authority even after he had left this earth. Of course, we know he still lives forever. He lives and reigns in heaven, and he lives in our hearts also. So his non-physical presence does not mean that his name is not at work. So he doesn't have to be physically present for his name to be at Wong. Well, you know, there's a song that God reminded me of, you know, as I was, you know, preparing this. And the song goes, Jesus, something special, supernatural about your name. 
Jesus, something happens when I mention your name. And it goes, demons have to flee. When I say Jesus, you say, Jesus, sickness has to heal. When I say Jesus, you say, Jesus, every knee shall bow before and every tongue proclaim with worthy praise that matchless name of Jesus, Jesus, something special. Something special, supernatural about your name, Jesus. Something happens, something happens when I mention your name. Upon your name, the very atmosphere will have to change, will be transformed, will never be the same by the power of your holy name. Anytime you want something supernatural, anything wonderful to happen, don't call on the name of any human being. Whose name must you call? Jesus. Jesus. That's basically the summary of that song. The wonder of his name. There's something that happens when you shout the name Jesus. Jesus. I didn't hear you. There's something that happens when you shout the name Jesus. Jesus. Who is the greatest name of all? Jesus. Jesus. Who is the name that makes things happen? Jesus. Jesus. Who is the name above every other name? Jesus. Jesus. Something supernatural happens Amen. when we mention the name Jesus. The Bible says in the heavenly realm, not just here on earth, in heavens, in heaven, everything in heaven trembles at the mention of the name of Jesus. Revelations 5, 11 to 14. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth, and as such as are in the sea and are on and are and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that seated upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forevermore. Even in heaven, the angels, they bow when they hear the name Jesus. The beasts, they bow when they hear the name Jesus. The 24 elders bow when they hear the name Jesus. Everyone trembles at the mention of the name of Jesus. Even in earth, everything and everyone trembles, recognizes the name of Jesus. Something happens in the natural realm every time Jesus is on the scene. The name of Jesus is called upon. And my appeal to each one of us is use that name. It's a weapon, it's a tool, it's an ammunition you have, it's an equipment that you have. Don't refrain from using the name Jesus. So I'm just going to go through some names in the Bible, some people who use the name of Jesus and it worked for them. You know the story of blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10, 46 to 52. I'm not going to read the whole thing. 
But you know the story of blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says blind Bartimaeus, the blind Bartimaeus sat by the highway begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, what did he begin to do? He started to cry out and to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You know the end of the story. What happened? Blindness bowed because the name of Jesus was called. It didn't matter how complicated that situation is. The Bible also records that there were also two blind men that also sat hoping that people would drop on their hand money to use. We read their account in Matthew 20, 30 to 34. The Bible said two men were sitting by the wayside when they heard Jesus pass by. They cried saying, have mercy upon us, O Lord, thou son of David. At the end of the story, what happened? These two men also received that sight. So maybe you say the, the, the blind Bartimaeus case was a coincidence. But when something is repeated, it is not a coincidence. God is at work. They mentioned the name Jesus and something happened. Blindness submits to Jesus. We also hear the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The woman who had a menstrual cycle that lasted 12 years. Ladies, you know what I'm talking. We only have it five days a month, and those five days, it's like, oh God, I can't wait for Menno to happen. You know, and some people rejoiced at the appearance of Menno because it's like, wow, finally I'm, I'm rid of this thing. But imagine this woman had this issue not for 12 months, not for 12 days, but for 12 years, add it up, ladies. Constant, constant, constant. 12, 12, can you imagine? 12 years, 12 months, 144 months, if my math is right. 144 months. Now, add it to the number of days for you to know how long. Yet, the Bible said in Mark 5, 27 to 34, Mark 5, 27 to 34. I'm just going to read that first bit. It says, when she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched the hem of his garment. All she heard was the name of Jesus, that he's in town. That activated something in her. That sprung up faith in her. She said, you know what? I must reach where this man is. I must touch the hem of his garment. I know if I touch the hem of the garment of this man called Jesus, something will happen. How many people will reach out today and touch the hem of the garment of Jesus? If you touch the hem of the garment of a human being, I cannot guarantee that anything will happen. But if you reach out and touch Jesus' hem, the hem of his garment, something positive, something supernatural, something beautiful will happen in your life, just like it did for this woman. There's another man named Zacchaeus. He also heard about Jesus and longed to see Jesus. He longed to see him. The Bible said he was of a short stature. So when there is a huge crowd, if he stood in the midst, he won't be able to see them. Ask, ask, um, okay, I'm sorry, I've jumped a little bit. Yes, Luke 19, verse 1 to 6. I'm not going to read all these passages because we're familiar with them. But I'll mention them so you can go back and just read the whole account. Luke 19, 1 to 6, and then 9 to 10. You know, the very first and second verse says, As Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was of the chief, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus. By the time you read verse 9, you know, and Jesus saw him. The Bible said he 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 climbed up to a tree just so he can get a glimpse of Jesus. Can you imagine? And where, Jesus today is in our hearts. You are not doing this to climb up to a tree. But this man was so desperate to see Jesus, he climbed up to a tree. And at the end of the day, Jesus Christ said, look, I am coming to your house today. And he says, today, salvation has entered your house. All you just need is the name Jesus and salvation comes in. Isn't that amazing? The name of Jesus is amazing. Jesus Christ said to, said to him in verse 9, he said, this day is salvation come to your house. Why? Because he saw Jesus, because he heard the name Jesus. We also have the account of a lame man who also had the name of Jesus. Acts 3, 6 to 10. Acts 3, 6 to 10. The 
The Bible says, I'm just going to read, you know, maybe the first verse. It says, then Peter said, silver and gold we don't have. But such as we have, we will give unto you. We don't have silver and gold, but we have something. We have something they call in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. You know, silver and gold could not make the lame man to walk. The doctors around maybe perhaps couldn't help him. But in the name of Jesus, the Bible said he rose up. Wonders of the name of Jesus. Wonders of his name. The lame walk when they hear the mention of the name Jesus. Will somebody shout Jesus? Jesus! Once again, you know when I say shout Jesus, I want you to shout it, you know, meaningfully. Shout Jesus! Jesus! That was all the lame man had. And everything that needed to be in place in his life was in place. The Bible also says everything and everyone in the demonic realm submit to the name of Jesus. It is not a question of will they. Once you mention the name Jesus, principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, evil spirits, demonic entities, even the devil himself trembles, bows, prostrates, falls at the mention of the name of Jesus. We read an account of a man who was demon-possessed, the madman of Gadara. We read that account in Mark 5, 1 to 13. The Bible said this man was so mad that, and the demons in him were so many, when they put him in chains, he would break the chains. When they say, how many are demons? They say, we are a legion. And they say, a legion is at least a thousand. So just imagine about a thousand demons in the life of one man. No wonder the chains could not bind him. The Bible says his home was tombs. But all he just heard was Jesus. And the madness disappeared from him. Somebody one more time shout, Jesus! Jesus! Verse 6 of Mark 5. He says he saw Jesus afar off. He ran and did what? worshipped him. He saw Jesus afar off. Ran, worshipped. If you would just do that today, just worship Jesus. Huh? Remember we spoke about the wonders of praise on Friday. If you did, if you are not there, go and listen to the message. The wonders of praise. Listen to it and you'll be blessed. The Bible also spoke about two men, you know, and I'm deliberately giving example of one man, two men. So you know it is something repeated in Matthew 8, 28 to 32. We also have a similar account of two men who were mad. And they just had an encounter with the name Jesus. And they too were delivered. I'm also going to read an account in Acts 19, 13 to 16. This one I'm going to read the whole text in the Amplified Version. Evil spirits recognize the name Jesus. So don't, don't let anybody bamboozle you. They will cast a spell on you. They will cast a jinx on you. Say, oh, even evil spirits recognize the name of Jesus. So that's no big deal. You know, even everybody recognizes it. Everybody trembles at the name of Jesus. And let's read this account. Then some of the traveling Jewish exorcists, men who adjure evil spirits, also undertook to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I solemnly implore and charge you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches, seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priest named Sceva, were doing this. But one, listen to this, everybody, but one evil spirit retorted, Jesus, I know. Jesus, the evil spirit said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? It, it was the evil spirit that said, I know Jesus. I know Paul. So Jesus is recognized and is respected and they tremble before him. The Bible also tells us hell and death also tremble at the presence of Jesus. So nobody can threaten you with untimely death. He said they're going to, no, no, no. Tell them that even hell and death tremble 
at the mention of the name of Jesus. Ephesians 4, 8 to 10. Ephesians 4, 8 to 10. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now, now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. The Bible said when Jesus Christ descended into the lower parts of the earth, he made a public show of the devil, triumphing over him in it. So death and hell recognize his name. So don't let, don't let death be a threat to you. Because the name of Jesus, there's a wonder about the name of the Lord Jesus. Revelations 1, 17 to 18. I love this text. The wonders of the name of Jesus. Please, brother, use that name often. Use it all the time. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he said, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of what? Hell and death. He says, I have the keys. The devil doesn't have the key to hell. He cannot drag you to hell. He doesn't have the key to death. He cannot orchestrate your death. Unless, you know, you know what the devil does? He pretends as though he has it. And many people are drawn into it. But he doesn't have the key. No, no, no. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't have ownership of hell. God is the determinant of those who go to hell, not the devil. Mm. So don't let the devil say, ah, you have already told one lie. You might as well just carry on. You have already uh, been angry and sinned. You know, you might as well just carry on because I already own you. Just carry, it's a lie. Bible says, sin therefore shall not have dominion over us. Why? Because we are not under the law, but we are under grace. The powerful name of Jesus. Prayers are answered in the name of Jesus. So maybe you pray and you don't use the name of Jesus. You are wasting your time. John 14, 13 to 14. John 14, 13 to 14. And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. Did you hear what God said? If you ask what? Anything. Anything in my name, I will do it. Signs and wonders happen in the name of Jesus. Huh? It doesn't happen in the name of anybody else. If anybody else is using their names and signs and wonders is happening, know that it is not from God. Because signs and wonders only happens in the name of Jesus. There are many people today who profess mm -hmm. that it is their name that is bringing signs and wonders. Be careful about that kind of sign and wonder. It originates from the devil. Mm -hmm. And the devil will come back to ask for a payback. The devil doesn't give any free lunch. And that's why many people find themselves sneered into or the occult and so many bad places mm -hmm. because they are desperate for signs and wonders that are not rooted in Christ. If any pastor, any minister, any bishop, any pope claims to be the one doing the signs and wonders, what must you do? Carry your bank and run. <laughs> Flee. Because signs and wonders are only done in the name of Jesus. Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. What did he say? In my name. They shall cast out devils. In my name, they will speak in tongues. Only in the name of Christ is it done. Hmm. Now, let's consider some of the names Jesus called himself. Because that's important, and I'm going to be wrapping up with that. Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. So, satisfaction, salvation is only found in Christ. He says, you will eat this bread and you will not be hungry again. Only Jesus Christ can give lasting satisfaction. So you want it, get it from Christ. John 6, 35 and 48. In both places, he repeated it. I am the bread of life. 
I am the bread of life. Jesus also said, John 8, 12, John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Everywhere else, everyone else produces darkness. God, Jesus, is the source of light. He's the only one that can take us out of darkness into light. Nobody else can. Nobody else can lay claim to that. The wonder of his name. Only the name of Jesus. He is the light of the world. He says anyone who follows him will not walk in darkness. John 10, 7 and 9. John 10, 7 and 9. Jesus also said, I am the door. Don't let anybody else de deceive you. There's only one way. There's only one door. He says when the sheep go in through me, they do what? They will find pasture. You're looking for pasture. You're looking for greener pasture. You're looking to make it in life. What do you need? Jesus. He was the one that provides opportunity and nourishment. In John 10, 11, John 10, 11, he said, I am the good shepherd. Every time I see all those additions to the description of a person, I wonder, why not I am the shepherd? In other words, there will be so many bad shepherds out there. So in other words, not every shepherd is good, but me, I am the good shepherd. So you're looking for a genuine, bona fide shepherd, someone who will lead you and guide you in the right path, guide you away from the wolves. What do you need? Jesus. He's the only one that can do that. In John 11, 24 to 25, the wonder of his name, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha said, yeah, I know by in the by and by, you know, Lazarus will come by. Yeah, I know he will come. He said, no, 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 no. You didn't get it. I am, as we speak now, I am already the resurrection and the life. As I'm talking to you right now, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. If there's any dead, stinking situation in your life that needs to be revived, just call on him. He's not in the by and by. It is now. He is the resurrection and the life. So hope is not lost. He says, anyone who believes in me, though he were dead, he will live. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You don't find a way outside of Christ. You don't find the truth outside of Christ. And you won't find life outside of Christ. He's the only one that is the way, the truth, and the life. John 16, John 14, 6. He's the only one that gives access to God the Father. Some people say you can be a Muslim, you can be a Hindu, a Buddhist, Hare Krishna, or cultic, whatever, and you will still get to God. Yes, you may still get to God, but it will not be the Alpha and the Omega. It will not be the Almighty God. It will be a different kind of God because there's only one God and there's only one way to him. Jesus Christ said, you come through me. That name is so wonderful. You come through me, you will get to God. You're looking for God, go through Jesus. You just need to find Jesus, get Jesus, connect with Jesus, walk with Jesus, and you will get to God. You will get to heaven. You will get to that destination God has ordained for your life. Jesus also said in John 15, 1 and then 4 to 5, he says, I am the true vine. I always like, you know, is it adjectives or whatever? Is that is attached, attached to the main word. I am the true. In other words, there are fake vines out there. I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. And then verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you. A branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. He is our source. That name Jesus is the only true source. Every other one is counterfeit. You know? They say when, it, when a human being places you on the pedestal, be very careful the day you offend them, because they will remind you. Uh, Am I, not, am I not the one that helped you? You forgot it so, so quickly. Ah, never ever make any human be your source. Because they will come back one day and tell you that they are your God, that without you, 
Without them, you are nothing. Never, don't give anybody that kind of power over your life. So, I have said so many things about the name of Jesus. Let us rise up. What is our response? The name of Jesus brings joy. It brings peace, healing, deliverance, salvation, direction, blessings. What's our response? Everybody open your Bible to Romans 10, 12 to 13. Romans 10, 12 to 13. And we're all going to read it together. What should be my response? I've been told now the name of Jesus is wonderful. The wonder of his name. So many things happen at the name of Jesus. Let's read it together. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Look at your neighbor. Say, whosoever. Whosoever. Find another neighbor. Say, whosoever. Whosoever. Another neighbor. Say, whosoever. Shall call on the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. So what are you going to do right now? Call upon the name Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Now, as you call his name, what do you want him to do? Jesus. The blind man said, I want to see. I want to live. I want to be healed. I want to be blessed. I want to be directed. Zacchaeus said, I want salvation. What do you want? Call the name Jesus. I want your good hand upon my life. Jesus, Jesus, show me your mercy. Jesus. Jesus, intervene in our lives. Jesus, bring joy to us. Jesus, bring peace to us. Jesus, bring healing to us. Jesus, bring salvation to us. Jesus, bring deliverance to us. Jesus, bring your blessing to us. Jesus, let your good hand be upon us. Jesus, show us your mercy. Jesus, show us your mercy. Say, Jesus, I call on you. Rescue me. Bless me. Make me fruitful, oh God. Use me for your glory. Jesus, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my household. Have mercy on me. Jesus, arise to our aid. Jesus, arise to our rescue. Jesus, fight for us. Jesus, guide us. Save us. Sanctify us. Use us. Justify us, redeem us, transform us, bless us, oh God, help us, oh God. Jesus, we need you. Say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I've got to have you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Blessed be your name. Now lift up your voice and thank him. And say, glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Now lift up your two hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the entrance of your word. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you for your tender mercies. Our hands are lifted up to you just like a little child lifts up their hands to the mother, the father, to carry them. Lord, carry us. Jesus, carry us. Jesus, defend us. Jesus, shield us. We've had so many examples of people who had an encounter with you and their life remained not the same. Their lives were transformed. Jesus, we want to experience the transformation that comes from you, the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen, amen. amen. praise the name of the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. praise jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. praise jesus hallelujah. hallelujah god is faithful hallelujah.